Okay, now we're focusing on the Great Denial, part two of the Great Denial. And today we're going to be focusing on the Bible. Yesterday we focused mainly on the first part of the Great Denial, which was the denial of the Lord or the denial of Jesus Christ. And in Psalms it said that the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. Now we also gave the scriptures for the biblical portion of this or the Bible portion that which we're going to be talking about today and I'll read those again now. Galatians chapter 1 verses 8 through 9. It's Galatians chapter 1 verses 8 through 9 and it says, But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to and different from that which we preach to you, let him or her be accursed. And we said before, so I say now again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel different or contrary to that which you receive from us, let him or her be accursed. Now, notice that it's restated in verse 9. So it said twice the same thing that is restated a different way. So this is really important that we pay attention to this passage in Galatians. It's a, it's a protection for us concerning what the Bible is teaching us and what it's telling us. We've got to be careful with this. So Galatians has given us a straightforward warning to say that we don't need to listen to a bunch of mess, basically. Now, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 says, Every scripture is God-breathed, given by His inspiration, and profitable for instruction, and reproof, and conviction of sin, for correction of error, and discipline in obedience and for training in righteousness and holy living and conformity to God's will and thought, purpose, and action. Now, we discussed yesterday that there is a, a desire to be like God in all of us. Now, we can do this by following his example, or we can literally try to be God. One of, but of course, you know, when we literally try to fill the shoes of God, we fail miserably. Now, yesterday I mentioned the example of, of Dr. Frankenstein and the Frankenstein monster. For those of you who know the story, you know what happened. You know, he took dead body parts, he sewed them together, he stole a brain, but he got the wrong one. So the monster, this semi-human type of being that was created by a man and some electrodes basically was insane and he was killing people. So he failed miserably trying to play God. And then they made a whole bunch of movies after that so he wouldn't die. He kept dying and coming back. So this is what happens when we try to play God. It fails, period. Now we know that we're not to be God. We're not meant to be God. But what about this thing called the Bible, this thing that says Holy Bible? What about the book that is at the core of our faith and what we do? Now there are some people who perceive the Word of God loosely and there's some who look at it very literally. And there's some who try to look at it both ways. Now, now I try to be open. But there are many points in the Bible where it gives us plain instruction. It's not, it's not something up for debate. It's instruction on what to do and what not to do. We argue this mainly because we typically don't like what it tells us not to do. But there's always good reasons why it tells us not to do them. And it isn't just to keep us from going to hell as some preachers so narrowly teach us or describe to us. So today we're going to focus on a few of the commands in the Bible and why it is important to follow these commands for our lives. I'm going to focus on two today and then I believe we're going to focus on two tomorrow. But today we're going to focus on homosexuality and drunkenness. Now concerning the issue of homosexuality, we're going to be looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 9 through 10 and it reads as follows. Do you not know that the unrighteous and the wrongdoers will not inherit or have any share in the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived or misled. Neither the impure and immoral, nor the idolaters or adulterers, nor those who participate in homosexuality, nor cheat, swindlers, and thieves, nor greedy graspers, nor drunkards, nor foul-mouthed revelers and slanderers, nor extortioners and robbers will inherit or have any share in the kingdom of God. Now, this is probably the hottest issue in the American media at the moment and within the church. Now, I've already heard that the Methodist Church is just one denomination that is considering having a major split as a result of this division over this topic. Now, I also heard of a class not too long ago at a school which is Bible-centered and Christian-centered, and I will not mention the name, and the teacher basically stated 
that there was absolutely no mention of the homosexual lifestyle in the Bible. Now, I just read it to you, and there's also some passages in, uh, in Leviticus. Now, so this is false, of course. Now, we will also suggest a teaching to you by the late Dr. Lester Sumrall that is on YouTube, and it is entitled, The Homosexual Abomination. The Homosexual Abomination. And I personally believe it is the best teaching that I have heard on the subject, and it certainly shows that it is mentioned in the Bible. So why is it important to follow God on this matter? Now, I was told in high school by a teacher the scientific issues that come about as a result of living this way. They told that it used to be referred to as a psychological disorder in one of the previous DSM books for counselors and psychologists, etc. And he then described what happened when people performed the act of sodomy. The lining, now, now pardon me if this sounds too graphic, but the lining of the anus weakens and over time one cannot hold their own bowels. Now we're talking about young people, not old people. That certainly sounds like something that is unnatural and unhealthy to me. That area of the human anatomy was basically made for things going out, not things going in. Now, that's, what, that's the way he described it to us. Now, not to mention certain diseases, because you're talking about the contact with feces because of what comes out of that area. So, it does create a lot of potential for disease. So, here we go. Now, this, these, this is just the scientific reasons and, and kind of the logical and practical reasons for not participating in the lifestyle of homosexuality. Now, it's, and this is the point I'm trying to make to you, that it's not just sin. And that's what we got to get past. It's not just sin. There's other reasons, too, why the Bible says, don't do this. Now, the second thing I was going to mention is drunkenness. Now, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, it says, Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. But ever be filled and stimulated with the Holy Spirit. Then Proverbs 20 verse 1 says, Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is a riotous brawler. And whoever errs or reels because of it is not wise. Basically, when we're under the influence of alcohol, it's not wise. Now currently, in the culture and in our society... One can obtain alcoholic beverages relatively easy. Almost every restaurant sells it, and there's multiple ABC stores in most major cities. Now, now let us consider the negative effects of alcohol. And let me, let me say this, too. I am one who has experienced firsthand alcoholism. I've seen that we've had several alcoholics in our family, not just one or two. But I should say a nice handful of alcoholics. Um, so, now basically, when one consumes alcoholic beverages, there is an effect on the mind, what some people call being under the influence. The person begins to act in a way that is, in essence, unnatural to their normal self. Now, this often includes outbursts, physical aggression, and uncontrollable sexual urges. Now, I can also add that it impairs the judgment of one's mind, and there has been abuse, and murders committed as a result. And, and you can look at the statistics for yourself. You can go talk to the police department. And there's so many domestic disputes and so many issues and, and just negative things that happen as a result of alcohol. Now, I could include drugs in this, but really we're just focusing on alcohol and being drunk with alcohol. It does create potential for disaster. This does not include the damaging effects on one's health. Now, I was told a story by a pastor, a true story, who, and he witnessed it. The pastor actually tried to counsel them, but there was a couple, and the husband was awarded for optimum performance on his job. I don't remember what the job was, but basically he got a reward, an, an award, excuse me. And he was, the, the award was a crate of beer. So I guess it was like 24 bottles of beer or something like that. So he took it home, and the wife began drinking. The wife began drinking, and within months, she was a drunk alcoholic. And within several years, she was uh, diagnosed with cirrhosis of the liver, and she passed away from it. Her skin had turned yellow, 
and the pastor that I'm telling you about, he went to the hospital and saw her skin had changed color so vividly. It had turned this yellow color and she basically just rotted away. Now that's only one story about alcohol and how devastating it could be and how innocently, listen to me, how innocently the addiction can begin. And we wonder why the Bible tells us to leave it alone. Now I know for me, now I'm not against maybe a small glass of wine. I'm not against that, but at the same time for myself, with it running in my family the way that it does, and also just little tendencies that I have, because I have dealt with addiction. And, I, and not necessarily substance addiction, but I don't want to test it either. I, I, and the fact that it runs in my family in the sense of I've seen other people with alcoholic tendencies. So it, for me personally, my personal preference is I don't even want to mess with it. Um, now, as a teenager, I wanted to experiment. And I remember um, there was a point where I had, I think, some rum or something. I don't know what it was. And I mean, I was sick for about three or four days. I mean, it was absolutely terrible. It tore my stomach to pieces. So, you know, something like that. You know, And I think that was just God's way of saying, okay, dude, I called you to ministry. I didn't call you to get drunk. I didn't call you to drink. I didn't call you to try to, uh, to be on the fence about everything. You can't straddle the fence. You've got to make a choice. So, anyhow, with that, um, those are the two things I wanted to mention today, our homosexuality and drunkenness. Now, tomorrow we're going to mention two more um, things that are considered sins, but there's also a good reason, or a practical reason, logical reason, health reason, why we shouldn't participate in it. And, and if you have questions, feel free to call us or you know send us an email or something. But like I said, the whole point of this is I want to show you in this teaching that there's more to it than it just being sin. There's also some common sense here, okay? This is some practical thinking. It's, hey, look, you don't need to do this because it's not good for you. Now, I want to also refer you to a booklet. It's 32 pages. It's called Right and Wrong, A Case for Moral Absolutes. And this is a really good booklet to read by RBC Ministries, Radio Bible Class Ministries. You can go to rbc.org and order the booklet or read the PDF version of it on the website. And go to the search bar on rbc.org and type in Right and Wrong, A Case for Moral Absolutes. That's right and wrong, a case for moral absolutes. It is also, if, you go, if you're friends with me on Facebook, you can go to my photos, and we have a photo album um, called Matthew and Ashanti's Ministerial Resource Shelf, and this is one of the booklets that we refer to people. It is an awesome booklet. Um, now, you can also call them at 1-616-974-2210. That's 1-616-974-2210. And you can request the booklet by name and they will send it to you in the mail free of charge. And like I said, this will also give you uh, more information on what I'm teaching here. Um, I didn't really necessarily get any of this information from that booklet, but the booklet teaches, I think, probably in a better way concerning moral absolutes and concerning the Bible and right and wrong and also in relevance to our society right now. So check that book out and we hope that you have enjoyed the teaching today. We pray for you every day and um, remember that if you need anything from us, please contact us and if you need literature, contact us. We would love to send you some. If you're not born again, hey, go to Christ right now and say, Lord Jesus, forgive me a sinner. I submit myself to you. In Jesus' name, amen. So now if you said that prayer, we believe that you've just been born again. So like I said, contact us. We'd love to hear from you. May God bless you. We look forward to seeing you again tomorrow on Christ Centered for part three of the Great Denial. Don't miss it. Part three of the Great Denial. God bless. I'd rather have reasons
Riches untold. I'd rather.